GIMP and Krita are both at the top of their respective categories in the free software space, with GIMP being the best free photo editor by far, and Krita arguably the best digital painting app. However, Krita has been introducing many intriguing photo editing features to its app that have people wondering, is Krita a better free photo editor than GIMP? In today's video, I'll be taking a look at Krita's photo editing features to see how the program stacks up against GIMP as a photo editor. But of course, before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. I have tons of video tutorials on here as well as free software help articles, so definitely check that out. You can get more content by becoming a DMD Premium member, and you can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Over the last several years, Krita has cemented its place in the free software world by creating a feature rich digital painting platform that's geared towards artists. Its website says the software is made for concept art, texture and matte painters, and illustrations and comics. However, Krita has also managed to incorporate some more advanced photo editing features like adjustment layers, CMYK support, multi-layer selection, and the ability to open raw images. These are all features that GIMP users have been waiting on for a long time, so now that these features are in Krita, does this make Krita better at photo editing than GIMP? Not exactly. Although it is quite a breakthrough that Krita was able to introduce all these advanced features before GIMP could achieve the same feat, the program still has some hindrances when it comes to certain common photo editing tasks. Plus, when you look at layer adjustments and raw processing in Krita more closely, they're pretty basic in terms of functionality and in some cases slow in terms of performance. Before I go any further, this is a quick disclaimer and reminder that I'm only analyzing Krita's photo editing capabilities compared to GIMP's and not analyzing Krita as a program in its entirety. As someone who definitely cannot paint digitally or otherwise, I do not feel I'm qualified at this time to fully assess digital painting software, which is what Krita primarily is. So I'll start this assessment off with a quick list of what Krita has in common with GIMP. Like GIMP, Krita has basic editing tools like a transform tool, crop tool, smart patch tool for basic spot removal, paint tools, of course, and path and selection tools. It has a layer system with layer groups and layer masks. Finally, it has several filters for making basic image adjustments or adding effects. But let's take a deeper dive into the features that set Krita and GIMP apart, starting with adjustment layers. Yes, Krita has adjustment layers. You can add an adjustment layer by clicking on the arrow drop down at the bottom of the layers docker, which is what Krita calls its layers panel or layers dialog then clicking filter layer. This will bring up a filter dialog that allows you to add any of Krita's filters as a filter layer, which is their synonymous term for an adjustment layer. Something I like about this dialog is that you can quickly cycle through all the filters and get a live preview of what the effect will look like on your image. There's also a decent amount of filters in here, including dodge, burn, color adjustment, and levels image adjustment filters artistic and blur filters like a halftone filter in Gaussian blur, and common sharpening filters like unsharp mask. However, there are many things I don't like about this dialogue or about Krita's adjustments in general, with most of my grievances having to do with the user experience. For example, I'll come back up to the levels adjustment, which is one of the more common adjustments to add to an image. Right off the bat, you'll notice that the histogram doesn't display properly here. However, if you apply the levels adjustment, then right click on the adjustment layer and choose properties, it'll bring the levels adjustment up in a separate dialog and the histogram will now display. This is also the case if I add a levels adjustment by going to filters levels, though this method adjusts the image's levels right on the image rather than on an adjustment layer. So in other words, this is the destructive method. I'll exit out of here though, click on the background layer, and once again click to add a filter layer. Also, you can only edit the value channel of the levels and not the individual color channels. This isn't a huge deal as there are other tools like the color balance filter or color adjustment filter that allow you to edit the colors in your image, but it is a pretty basic and commonly used function of the levels tool. Additionally, this filter requires that you release your mouse to see the changes, so you can't slide the values around to see real-time results of your adjustments like you can in GIMP. 
Instead, you have to drag and release, wait for the result to generate, then repeat. This can cause inaccurate edits and also add time to your workflow, and in my opinion, it's just kind of annoying. GIMP's Levels tool is a bit more intuitive. When added to an image, the filter dialog displays the histogram, shows your adjustments on the image in real time while also coming with a split preview option, and that's part of it being a Geggle filter, and allows you to adjust the value channel as well as each of the individual color channels. In other words, it's a fully functional levels tool, although the final edits do take place on your image directly and not on an adjustment layer. But looking at all the filter layer filters in general in Krita, there is no filter preview for getting a quick before and after of your adjustments. You do get a real-time preview of the filter on your image, but you can't toggle it on and off, at least not by default. The strange thing about this is that if I go to the filters menu and click on blur, Gaussian blur, for example, there is a preview checkbox in this case, but again, adding filters from this menu is destructive, meaning the adjustments or effects are occurring directly on your image and not on an adjustment layer. So I'm not sure why there's a discrepancy between filter layers and filters applied destructively to the image, but the discrepancy is there. Also, you can't zoom in on your photo while applying a filter layer. You're stuck at the zoom level you're at when you open the filter layer dialog, Again, the zoom works when applying a destructive filter, just not for filter layers, AKA adjustment layers. In GIMP, you can zoom in and out to get a better look at your changes and check for artifacts when using any of the main filters. Once again, because Krita uses filter or adjustment layers, you can always apply the filter, zoom in, then edit the settings of the filter again at any time. But these extra steps tend to add up when you're editing many images or making lots of edits to a single image. My final grievance in regards to Critis filters is that many of them don't have sliders for making adjustments to the filter or effects values. Instead, you have numerical fields and arrows for adjusting your values, which means Krita hardly gives you immediate feedback when you're tweaking settings. And instead you have to manually type values or click on the arrows and wait for the result. This process can be quite tedious when compared to a simple slider system like the one used in GIMP. Let's move on to opening raw images in Krita. I'll use a CR2 file from my Canon 7D, which is visible in my recent documents section here. I can double click this link to open the image and that will bring up a little dialog box. The first thing I noticed when this dialog opened is that the image preview on the right hand side is quite small and it even chops off a significant portion of the image. You can scroll up or down the entirety of the image's height, but you can't scroll all the way across the image's width. Also, the settings here are pretty technical, especially for new users. So it'll take a bit of research to figure out how all the settings here will affect your image. The good news is that there's a little update button at the bottom to update the image preview so you can see the changes your settings will produce on your final image prior to completing this step. For example, I'll change the highlights drop down to unclip, then click update. So as you can see here, this setting makes my image much darker. I'll switch the setting back to the default value and click update again, which will update the image. And now I'll click OK to apply these settings to my image. So that will open up our raw image into Krita. One thing I'll say is that despite the raw interface being a bit complicated for beginners, the default values for the raw image display do produce a pretty accurate result while requiring little to no user input. So you don't really have to do anything to open your unedited raw photo into Krita. Simply go with the default values and click OK. It is important to note that Krita has explicitly stated on Twitter that it is not a raw processor and that the software simply allows users to open raw images into the program. With GIMP, on the other hand, you can't open up raw images directly into the program. You have to process them first through another raw processor like Darktable or Raw Therapy. Though this process is a fairly simple one once you learn it, it does require downloading additional software and setting up the software to open up processed raw images into GIMP. But because Krita isn't a raw processor, you'd have to download at least one of these apps anyway if you wanted to properly edit your raw photos and take advantage of the benefits of editing raw images. I have an entire tutorial dedicated to showing you how to set this up with Darktable and GIMP, as well as a course on how to edit your raw images with Darktable. So definitely check out those resources if you're interested. All right, 
so switching gears now, I wanna talk about vector drawing in each of these programs. And I know what you're thinking, vector shape drawing isn't photo editing. This is true, but it is a handy tool when designing graphics that overlay on a photo. Vector shape tools are also becoming a standard in other photo editors like Affinity Photo and Photoshop and have been in high demand from GIMP users. So speaking honestly, when it comes to working with vectors, Krita does have the upper hand over GIMP in my opinion. Though Krita does not have a traditional paths tab like you'd find in GIMP, it does let you draw paths and vector shapes, and both of these are editable at any time during your workflow. To take advantage of this feature, you first have to create a vector layer by clicking the little drop down arrow in the layers docker and choosing vector layer. When this layer is active, any shape you draw with the shapes or curves tool will be editable using the edit shapes tool. And of course, you can also use the Select Shapes tool. Although in the case of drawing shapes in particular, you first have to convert the shapes to paths inside the Tool Options Docker in order to be able to edit the nodes of each shape using the Edit Shapes tool. So yeah, the user experience for drawing vectors in Krita can get a bit complicated, but once you figure it out, it's actually really useful. GIMP can draw shapes using selection areas as well as draw paths with the paths tool. With the paths editable over in the paths tab and the selection areas able to be converted to paths for further editing. Plus all of GIMP's transform tools come with modes that allow you to transform both selections and paths. And I do have tutorials covering these subjects, but GIMP does not have a dedicated vector shape drawing tool. This is to say that GIMP has some workarounds for drawing and editing the equivalent of vector shapes, but Krita has dedicated vector shape tools that can be edited in real time on your composition, which is what people expect out of shape drawing tools. There is a built-in feature called Gfig in GIMP that allows you to draw and edit vector shapes, which I cover in a dedicated tutorial but the filter is currently on the buggy side and isn't as intuitive as simply having built-in vector shape drawing tools. Vector shape drawing aside, I've mentioned a couple times throughout this video that Krita offers a layer system as does GIMP. They both also offer the ability to apply layer masks, which helps with things like background removal on images or simply creating areas of transparency on your photos. However, one drawback to Krita is that it doesn't really have a dedicated background erasing tool. GIMP has, of course, the high-powered foreground select tool for quickly selecting a foreground subject from a background, which is very effective at background removal. But Krita doesn't really have a powerful smart selection tool or really any tools that excel with background removal. You can manually paint out the background using a paintbrush and a layer mask, or you can use the built-in GIMP filters interactive foreground extraction feature but both of these options are a bit tedious compared to GIMP's options. GIMP definitely excels over Krita when it comes to image background removal as well as when it comes to having dedicated photo retouching tools. So one major thing I want to note about Krita is that as I just alluded to it comes with the gimmick plugin built into the program by default. This to me is actually a huge advantage for a variety of reasons. For one users don't have to manually install gimmick onto their computer and software like they do for GIMP. Secondly, users don't have to worry about whether Gimmick will work for their operating system or current version of the program as has recently become an issue with GIMP and their Mac builds. Finally, Gimmick has tons of great built-in photo editing features as well as photo manipulation effects. So the plugin extends Krita's photo editing capabilities much as it does for GIMP. So Krita users get to take advantage of this amazing plugin without having to deal with some of the headaches that come with having to install the plugin manually. Something else worth mentioning is that like Affinity Photo and Photoshop, Krita gives you the option to change your workspace based on what you're using the program for. This being said, it does not provide a photo editing workspace at this time, which I think underlines that Krita does not primarily identify itself as a photo editing app. In fact, to my knowledge, Krita's photo editing capabilities are mainly geared towards digital painters importing their drawings into the program. They can then use Krita's editing features to enhance the drawings, including the lines and the colors in the drawings, thus making them easier to see in the program as they're referencing them during the digital painting process. So the final thing I wanna cover about Krita as a photo editor is that it can edit images in CMYK colors spaces. You can do this easily by going to image, convert image color space, 
and choosing CMYK Alpha from the dropdown. As many of you probably already know if you subscribe to my channel, editing in a CMYK color space is useful for ensuring your colors display accurately when printed using a CMYK color printer. Krita also allows you to choose from a variety of built-in CMYK profiles, which is useful for getting the colors right based on the exact medium you're printing on. GIMP's lack of full CMYK support has been a major pain point for a lot of users for many years, so having this available in Krita is no small achievement. So to sum this video up, let's cover where the two programs, GIMP and Krita, excel when directly compared to one another. Krita excels with its inclusion of popular features like adjustment layers, full CMYK support, vector shape drawing tools, and the ability to open raw images. And it would be remiss of me not to mention that Krita also excels with its animation features, though that's not totally relevant to this video. GIMP, on the other hand, excels with its breadth of photo adjustment features, filters, and effects. Its overall performance when working with images, especially when working with adjustment tools and filters, its photo manipulation capabilities for things like background removal and photo compositing, and finally, its selection of tools dedicated to photo editing, retouching, and manipulation tasks. I think the important thing to remember here is that Krita is primarily a digital painting software with some great photo editing features, and actually, I think the opposite can be said for GIMP. GIMP is primarily a photo editor with some great digital painting features, although honestly, I think the gap between GIMP and Krita as digital painting software is small than the gap between GIMP and Krita as photo editing software. So is Krita a better photo editor than GIMP? In my opinion, no. But it is still really awesome software that I highly recommend anyone try. The good news, of course, is that both programs are free, so it won't cost you anything to try each one for yourself and see which one you prefer. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.